my name is Jack Daly and I'm going to show you how I do soil blocking. It's only my second year but I had a great time last year with it and I had a lot of success in starting my seeds using this soil block technique. Now a lot of people they just buy a bag of seedling mix in a tray and they put the seedling mix in the tray and then they add water and then they put a little light on it and they grow their seeds but that's way too simple, isn't it? I think we need to complicate things a little bit. And let me introduce you to my soil blocking kit. Everyone has their own method for soil blocking, but the ingredients are essentially the same. I sifted through several recipes and came up with what I thought was a good stable soil blocking mixture. Here are the ingredients. Compost, peat moss, and coconut core. These materials allow the blocks to absorb moisture and nutrients. I use a combination of peat moss and core, but you can use either. Just double the amount if you're just using one or the other. Garden dirt. I like to add some garden dirt to the mix to ease the transition from the soil block to the garden. It's probably not necessary, but it gives me the comfort of knowing the kids will have some sense of familiarity when they're turned loose in the garden. Next we have perlite. Perlite improves aeration to speed up germination. Perlite is different than vermiculite in that vermiculite retains moisture while perlite improves drainage. Now here are our nutrients. Fish bone meal for calcium and phosphorus. Blood meal for nitrogen. Green sand. Green sand consists of mineral deposits from the ocean floor and isn't found in many of the recipes, but it's a great source of potassium. Garden Tone General Use Fertilizer to ensure we cover all the basic nutrients. The tools necessary to soil block are as follows. A large mixing bin. This is a feed mix bin I got at a local farm supply store. I also like to screen my ingredients, especially the garden dirt, so I built a frame and stapled some quarter inch metal garden cloth on it. I also picked up this large scoop at the farm supply store. Trays to hold the soil blocks. These are cafeteria trays that work perfect for my blocker. They're a little more expensive, but they last for years. The soil blocker. There are two general sizes of blockers, and this one is the 2 inch blocker. There's another one that makes much smaller cubes. These are available on Amazon for about 35 bucks. A bucket that measures 1 gallon. You will also want buckets to hold any other ingredients that you're not using directly from the package, such as garden dirt. You may want a large bucket or bag to hold any extra dry mix if you don't use it all at once. A measuring cup. This one measures one fourth cup. A paint scraper or some way of scraping the excess mix off the bottom of the soil blocker. The recipe for the mix is as follows. Two gallons each of compost, peat moss, coconut core, garden dirt, and perlite. If you just use peat moss or coconut core, you will want four gallons. One fourth cup of garden tone bone meal, green sand, and blood meal. This amount of soil blocks mixture will provide approximately 250 2 inch soil blocks. Now that we have all of our ingredients ready to go, let's make some blocking mix. First I like to screen some of my ingredients. Onto the screen goes the garden dirt. I just use a gloved hand to push it through the screen into the bin. Now it's nice and fluffy and ready to use. Just dump it back into the bucket. The coconut core can be scraped dry on the screen to make a nice fluffy material or you can follow the directions and wet it so it'll break down and can be used damp. I like to screen the peat moss also. Some peat moss is perfectly fine right out of the package, but this stuff has some sticks and other clumps that I would rather keep out of my soil blocks. Now that our material is ready to go, we can add it to the bin. First, we add two gallon buckets of peat moss. 
then two buckets of coconut core, then the garden dirt. I only added one gallon here because I wanted to make sure the mix wasn't too dense, but I ended up adding the second one later. After this, in goes the two buckets of perlite. And finally, the two buckets of compost. Some of this mixing may cause dust, so wear a dust mask to protect your lungs if there is a lot of airborne particulate. Next, we add our supplements. One fourth cup each of green sand, then the garden tone, followed by the bone meal, and finally the blood meal. Using the scoop and the hands, mix everything thoroughly together. Now we have a nice mix of the dry materials. You may want to set a gallon or so of this dry material aside just in case the mixture gets too wet. You can then add more mix to get the right consistency. Next, we add water. I like to use lukewarm water, mainly because it isn't cold when I'm mixing it up with my bare hands. I like to use bare hands to mix it, but if your skin is sensitive, you may want to wear rubber gloves. Add water and continue to mix the ingredients evenly throughout the whole batch. You will want the mixture to be about the consistency of wet cement. If it is too dry, it will crumble, and if it's too wet, it will be too sloppy. I got lucky this time and got just the right amount of water. Be sure to scrape the bottom of the bin to ensure you have mixed all of the dry ingredients into the batch. Now let's give it a try. Make sure you fill a container with water so you can rinse the blocker off occasionally. Also, line up your trays so they're ready to accept the newly made soil blocks. Push the blocker into the mix and rock it back and forth to make sure it is fully packed with the mixture. Also, press downward with enough force to push it in the corners of the squares. I like to push it down onto the bottom of the bin to make sure the mix is well compressed into the blocker. Lift it out and scrape any excess mix from the bottom of the blocker so they will rest evenly on the tray. Move the blocker over the tray and squeeze the ram handle to push the blocks out onto the tray. Do this quickly so they pop out evenly. There, number one set is done. The blocks look just right to me, not too dry or too wet. Let's do it again. These trays work so well for lining up 8 blocks in length and 6 blocks in width to hold 48 blocks per tray. When the mix is almost used up, be sure to save a little to the side for covering the seeds. Now that we've loaded up our trays, we can clean up the mess and start inserting seeds into the depression made by the dibbles in the blocker. We have four full trays, and I've set aside another tray that is missing a few blocks because I ran out of mix. That gives us a total of 232 soil blocks. I like to get comfortable and line up my trays so I don't have to get up and down. First we'll plant broccoli. Just dribble one seed at a time into the pocket. If you accidentally get two in, remove one of them. You'll just want one seed in each depression. When all the blocks are full of seeds, I just dribble a little mix on top. Some say this is not necessary, but I like to feel like I've put them to bed. I follow the instructions on the seed packet to make sure I've covered them just about the right depth. I like to label these trays right away and keep track of what's planted where. Last year I thought I was nurturing 15 nice cantaloupe plants and about mid-June realized they were zucchini plants. I had to take most of them out and gave them away to the neighbors as one zucchini plant is enough for our household. 
I also found these small plastic bins that work perfectly for humidity domes. With the trays filled with seeded soil blocks and covered with humidity domes, into the house we go where I've set up a seed starting rack in the spare bedroom. After sliding the trays into the shelves containing the heat mats, I'll insert a thermocouple into one of the blocks and set the temperature for 73 degrees. This is usually the setting I use when I have a variation of seeds. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video and have enough information to make your own soil blocks. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.